This instructional film about the Zamboni Ice Resurfacer has been developed to provide information about its safe and proper operation and to introduce steps and procedures for operating and maintaining the machine. The Zamboni Company has manufactured a variety of models since Frank Zamboni's invention of the first ice resurfacing machine. Before the introduction of the Zamboni ice resurfacing machine, a complete reconditioning of the ice was not normally done more than once a day, as it involved three or four people and took up to two hours to perform. With a Zamboni ice resurfacer, one person can complete the entire resurfacing operation or individual components of it in a fraction of the time that was previously required. The objectives of resurfacing the ice are to produce a clean, smooth, and attractive sheet of ice. To control the flatness and thickness of the ice for maximum efficiency of the refrigeration system. To make the best ice surface possible and the time available. The actual controls of the various machines may differ, whether you are operating one of our older machines or a current model. Refer to the specific operating instructions for the resurfacer being used familiarizing yourself with the machine's functions and controls before attempting to operate it. The operating instructions should be reviewed by all new operators before attempting to drive the machine and by every operator on an annual basis. The proper adjustment and maintenance of a number of resurfacer components mentioned in this program are contained in our presentation on conditioner maintenance and we strongly suggest that it be thoroughly reviewed. First and foremost, we need to stress safety in the operation and maintenance of your machine. With that in mind, we cannot overemphasize the need for your operators and maintenance people to familiarize themselves with the cautions and warnings contained in the resurfacer operation manual and on the machine. Later model machines have more detailed instructions in both the manual and on the factory installed warning labels. We have mailed updated instructions and labels to all known owners of older units. These labels are available at no charge. So if you have a machine with its warning labels removed, obstructed, or painted over, we encourage you to contact us and we will send replacements. All safety and operation reference materials should be posted properly and made available to your operators for their review on a regular basis. It is critical that anyone working on or around the resurfacer exercise caution at all times. Never perform any maintenance or service on the machine without first turning the ignition off and removing the key. Anyone intending to service the machine should familiarize themselves with the part of the resurfacer on which they will be working. Prior to the beginning of the resurfacing operation, and assuming the operator is familiar with the functions of the machine, several items should be routinely checked before going onto the ice and while the snow tank is on the safety stand. At least once a day, check the engine oil and engine coolant levels on fuel-powered machines, and check the air quality in the ventilation system in the arena. For electric machines, the batteries should be inspected and their condition checked weekly. Are the wheel lug nuts snug? Are the squeegeeing towel in good condition? A walk around or circle check inspection should be performed, looking for anything that may appear to be out of order, including leaks under the machine. Prior to each resurfacing, check the fuel gauge level or the state of the charge of the batteries. Check the water levels in the ice making water tank, as well as the wash water system. We recommend using cold water in the wash water tank. Check for the proper movement of the snow breaker. Inspect the condition of the shaving blade and its position in relation to the conditioner runners. Look for any obstructions in the conditioner. Turn on arena ventilators. In enclosed facilities, the arena ventilation system should be operating any time a fuel-powered machine is operated. Be sure that the ice surface and the access area to the ice are clear of people and free of obstructions. With the preparations complete, ice resurfacing can begin. Get on the machine by placing both hands on the handle grips and then using the steps to climb aboard. The resurfacer is to be operated by one and only one person, no riders. First, rotate the ignition key. 
Second, start the engine or motor. Third, check for engine oil pressure and that no warning lights are illuminated. Next, lower the dump tank and secure the safety stand. Provided the ice has been cleared of people and foreign objects, raise the conditioner completely. Sound horn prior to driving onto the ice surface and proceed onto the ice slowly. Exercise caution going through any doors or gates. Position yourself for the pattern you'll use on the ice surface. At the beginning of the resurfacing, it's normally best to proceed down the center of the ice while setting up the shaving and water controls. The center ice is generally more level and it is easier to make adjustments to the blade and water controls without the additional concern of proximity to the boards. The operator should remain seated while the machine is in operation. Practice should allow you to make the proper overlaps needed for good pattern while in the sitting position. Begin by moving forward slowly so the towel will lay flat as the conditioner is lowered. Next, lower the conditioner completely. Proceed at a relatively slow speed and stay away from the boards until you are comfortable with the controls of the machine. You should hear a slight hissing sound from the hydraulic system when the conditioner is completely down, indicating full down pressure on the blade. Turn on the conveyors. As you proceed and before you apply water, you can quickly see the effect of the shaving blade by the width of the cut behind the conditioner and the distance from the cut to the runners. Check to make sure that the blade is cutting equally from each side of the conditioner to ensure the desired feathered edge effect. Observe the depth of cut and adjust the blade depth accordingly. Picking the proper depth of cut can depend on several factors, such as building or reducing ice thickness, the amount of loose snow on the ice surface, and the next usage of the ice. But the primary consideration is your prevailing ice thickness. There is no single ideal thickness that all rings should maintain. Since ice acts as an insulator, it is important that the ice thickness be no more than your ice floor requires for a flat level and safe ice surface. Most operators keep three quarters to one and a half inches of ice. Once your most efficient thickness is determined, the entire surface should be checked on a regular basis. The dots on the diagram suggest a pattern for checking the thickness of the ice. This can be done with a hand drill or by observing the brightness of the lines and the patterns in your ice. Monitoring the flatness and thickness of your ice sheet will help determine whether to decrease, maintain, or build the ice thickness. In an effort to keep a uniformly flat sheet of ice, some experienced operators use varying patterns on their ring surface. While this graphic shows the most commonly used pattern, sometimes a crossing pattern is utilized to eliminate waves in the ice. In addition, patterns are sometimes used that minimize shaving over the hockey goal crease or pass over the area more often to add additional water. The machine is designed to be operated in a clockwise pattern and the driver's side of the machine should be next to the boards when driving near them. As an aid to making your pattern, one or more strips of black electrical tape on the front of the snow tank lid can assist the operator in lining up the right side of the machine with the previous resurfacing pass. The resurfacing pattern used to cover the ice surface should be practiced so areas aren't missed and overlapping is avoided. While resurfacing with a fuel-powered machine, set the engine RPM within the recommended range for your model and vary the vehicle speed by using the transmission control foot pedal or handle. If the amount of snow pickup increases, slow the vehicle speed down, but be sure to keep the engine RPM at its recommended level. An important component on machines equipped with a vertical auger conveyor system is the snow breaker. Unless equipped with an automated system, the operator should push the snow breaker knob downward as often as is necessary to keep the flow of snow moving smoothly from one conveyor screw to the other. Since the snow may tend to bridge or build up at the entry of the vertical auger, it is important that the snow breaker return to the full upward position when it is not being pushed downward. If the snow breaker does not return to its full upright position, inspect its spring to make sure that it is not broken or faulty once the machine has left the ice and the engine or motor has been turned off. The washing operation would normally be started immediately after the conveyor is engaged in running. 
We strongly suggest that you use the wash water system during all of your resurfacing. You will produce a superior sheet of ice when it is incorporated into your resurfacing procedures. While moving, start the wash water system by opening the wash water valve. Follow this in about 10 seconds by activating the water pump switch. You should see the water from the pump flowing into the screen at the top of the wash water tank. If not, turn off both the water pump switch and the wash water valve. The various components of the wash system should then be inspected after you have left the ice and turned off the machine. Pickup of the wash water by the water pump can only be done if a wave of water is being pushed forward by the squeegee. A bit of speed is required to create the wave in front of the squeegee. Normally your wash water will operate properly with your valve set at about one half open. Too much water will result in water coming out of the conditioner. This could also be caused by worn conditioner runners or a dull blade lifting the conditioner off the ice. After starting the desired functions, slowly advance around the perimeter of the rink. Opinions of operators vary as to rubbing the conditioner against the dasher boards. Whether you choose to rub against the boards or leave a slight space between them and the conditioner, be sure to drive at a slow speed and reduce water flow while in proximity to the boards. If your machine is equipped with a guide wheel, use it only in an emergency and not as a steering device to continuously push you away from the boards. Keep the guide wheel as close to the boards as possible without touching them. Turn off the board brush after the initial lap is completed. Sometimes when resurfacing, you may find it advantageous to use only the shaving and the wash water applications. This allows the operator to reduce the ice thickness while still putting down a light film of water, or it can also be used to provide a relatively dry surface immediately following the resurfacing operation. To avoid streaks of water at either end of the conditioner, the squeegee must be tight against both runners. The wash water pump can also be used to remove excess water from the ice surface. Whether the result of ice melting or some other cause, excess water can be picked up by lifting the blade a few turns, which allows water to flow under the blade, then activating the water pump switch. The wash tank should be emptied prior to this operation. This is done by opening the water valve. The last step of the normal resurfacing operation is the application of the ice making water. The water valve would normally be opened shortly after the wash water valve is opened. Note the direct relationship between the adjustment of the valve handle and the discharge at the rear of the conditioner. This is easily visible to the operator and a quick glance should allow you to adjust the flow based on existing ice conditions. A heavy application of ice making water may cover a rough surface better but may be a mistake in the long run if your ice thickness exceeds the amount you should maintain at your facility. The amount of water applied should be determined by your ice conditions. Basically, you should apply the same amount of water to the ice surface as the thickness of the ice which you remove. To maintain a flat and even ice surface, the operator should keep the vehicle speed the same on the straightaways as in the turns, thereby assuring a uniform application of water. The Zamboni Advanced Water System, or AWS, is an available option for all 500 series machines. With it, the resurfacer speed automatically regulates the amount of water spread on the ice surface. It is imperative that the blade be sharp if the machine is to shave properly. If you encounter shaving problems such as waves or ripples on your ice, install a freshly sharpened blade. A blade can injure whether sharp or dull. Use gloves in extreme caution when handling a blade and refer to the resurfacer operating instructions for proper procedures. For additional information, refer to our video presentation on conditioner maintenance. To review, the normal resurfacing operation consists of shaving, snow removal, wash water cleaning the ice, and the application of ice making water. To summarize the normal sequence for the start of the resurfacing procedure, Begin moving forward, lower the conditioner, start the conveyors, adjust the blade, open the ice making and wash water valves. After 10 seconds, turn the wash water pump on. If you have a board brush, start it before you begin your first lap.
As the conclusion of the resurfacing approaches, the operator will want to develop a sequence to turn off the functions that are being used. If the wash water is operating, shut off the wash water valve first and wash water pump several seconds later while you have about one half lap or a full lap to go. This allows some of the excess wash water to disperse prior to lifting the conditioner when you leave the ice. As you approach the ice sheet exit, turn off your ice making water valve. At the exit, completely stop forward movement of the machine while all wheels are on the ice surface and turn off the conveyors. Lift the conditioner completely after the conveyors stop or they can damage each other if they are rotating while raising the conditioner. Sound horn and proceed off the ice. Drive to the pit and lift the snow tank. If your facility uses an outdoor snow dump, proceed cautiously to the dump area with the snow tank completely lowered. Be sure that the machine is brought to a full stop and on a level surface before lifting the tank. Access to the dump area should be as straight as possible since turns will decrease the tire stud life. If you dump outdoors, you should wash your tires thoroughly before returning to the ice surface. After dumping the snow, we suggest that you lower the tank onto the safety stand. This permits components such as the snow tank to dry more completely between resurfacings and allows for better visual inspection of the machine prior to its next use. To summarize the normal sequence for the conclusion of the resurfacing procedure, Stop the wash water about one half lap before exiting the ice. Turn off the water pump as you approach the exit. Stop the ice making water as you approach the exit. Stop the machine at the exit. Turn off the conveyors. Lift the conditioner. Sound horn prior to leaving the ice. If conditions allow, proceed slowly off the ice. Lift the snow tank and lower onto the safety stand. Overall, becoming familiar with the safe and proper operation of the Zamboni Ice Resurfacing Machine will result in the best performance from your machine and a superior ice sheet. As Frank Zamboni used to tell his customers, the principal product you have to sell is the ice itself. This presentation was designed to provide an introduction to the Zamboni Ice Resurfacer and the ice resurfacing process. Be sure to familiarize yourself with local laws and regulations governing the operation of the Zamboni ice resurfacing machine. If you need additional information regarding the safe and efficient operation of your Zamboni ice resurfacer, please contact your Zamboni authorized dealer or Zamboni authorized service representative or the Zamboni company directly. If it becomes necessary to stop the machine while resurfacing, or if the engine stops, immediately shut off the water and the conveyors and lift the conditioner to avoid freezing the towel to the ice surface. Open water valves can quickly create deep holes in the ice surface. For propane powered machines, check to make sure the propane tank valve is open. If it becomes necessary to manually raise the conditioner, close the pilot operated check valve or PO. It is normally open and is closed by turning the knob on the PO check valve clockwise. Machines manufactured prior to September of 1992 have a ball valve in the same general location that needed to be opened by turning it 90 degrees. Insert the hand pump handle and pump up the conditioner while holding the conditioner valve in the lift position. If it becomes necessary to tow the machine, open the bypass valve on the hydrostat. Tow or push the machine off the ice. If the red engine oil pressure warning light goes on, immediately turn off the water, raise the conditioner, stop the engine, and investigate the cause. In addition to an overload of the conveyor system, a clog or apparent clog could be caused by a foreign object caught in the conveyor. If during the resurfacing operation any part of the conveyor system becomes plugged or clogged, or appears to be plugged or clogged, the conveyor should be flushed out with water. This procedure must be done only after the machine has been removed from the ice and the engine or motor has been shut off. Under no circumstances should the operator attempt to clean or clear the conveyor system or parts around it while the machine is on the ice while the engine or motor is running. After leaving the ice, raise the snow tank and support it on the safety stand. 
turn off the engine or motor, and be sure all movement stops before proceeding. With a water hose, flush out the vertical conveyor and surrounding area. The operator should never place hands or fingers in the conveyor because blades or paddles can cut or pinch and cause serious injury. Remove the conditioner covers and flush the horizontal conveyor. Direct the stream of water into the bottom of the vertical conveyor as well. After replacing the conditioner covers, start the engine or motor and lower the snow tank. With the snow tank down, engage the conveyors and observe to ensure that they are rotating freely. If you notice excessive engine or motor loading or hissing sound coming from the hydraulic control valve, stop the engine and repeat the flushing procedures. Check for obstructions in the conveyors. It is imperative that the system be thoroughly flushed and cleared in order to determine the actual cause of the problem. For additional tips on troubleshooting potential problems, reference your machine's operation manual or contact your customer service representative.